Grand Prix drivers are usually considered the glamour boys of motorsport. But let's face it, not everyone zips around in a Formula One racing car. For the ordinary people who drive Holdens and Fords, or any of the Japanese or European sedans, there's a tremendous interest in touring car championships. The James Hardy 1000 of Bathurst is a good example of the excitement such races can generate. And in that kind of competition, Peter Brock is king of the road. He's shown that an Australian driving an Australian car can attract the kind of hero worship normally associated with Monaco and the Grand Prix circuit. Some even liken him to an Aussie version of Paul Newman. Very cool, very good looking and very fast. Driving to me is, is a nice escape. It's a means of getting out of the office and once I get behind the wheel of the car, I am relaxed. I just get behind the wheel of the car and I'm doing, I know, what I can do best. Peter Brock, 41 and still the king of Australian motor racing. He's won more big races than anyone else. But success on the track is not the only thing that sets him apart. To a lot of female admirers, he's a winner off the track as well. He's just great, he's beautiful. I just love him. I love him so much. I, I just come here just to see him. Does that competition ever put pressures on you and your marriage? No. If I worried about every girl who got the hots for Peter, I'd be a cock case and our marriage would never have survived. The start is near the last nervous seconds before the start of the James Hardy 1000. You don't have to be a racing groupie to have heard about Peter Brock, and this is the event that's made him a household name. The James Hardy 1000 at Bathurst. It's to racing enthusiasts what a grand final day is to footy fans. And Peter Brock has won it eight times. Uh, an absolute dream run for it. Do you think you're the best? I do, but I don't say that in a, in a way that it probably sounds. I say that because I have belief in my ability and belief that if I really want to do something and I'm single-minded enough to do it, I will do it. He's got a mental attitude that just has to be seen to be believed. He's, he sets his mind on a mission, he's single-minded, and nothing will thwart him from that. Beverly Brock. People You'd have to say so the perfect easy. formula for a racing driver's wife. It, it She's as revved up about fast cars as her husband is. Things. He has a rare natural talent, but because he works very hard at it. And a lot of other people who sort of, you know, they get a bit put off by the fact that he is out there winning all the time. They can't appreciate what he does put into it. They think that he sort of sits back and coasts along with them, but they don't know the man. This is how it all began. At 13, Peter Brock gets his first taste of speed in a car he built himself. And the racetrack, a paddock on the family farm. That was the first sporty thing that I ever drove. I think that it's fair to say that uh, I took to racing like a duck to water. Inside the car with Peter Brock, he's working hard. Now he comes to Sky on a frightening part of the second. Down he goes. Rub on the tail of Alan Grice. Tail gaining is Peter Brock. To Have you ever been uh, scared during a race? Have you ever felt well, only, really frightened? Only at times when you, you've arrived into a corner. I remember one particular time at Bathurst coming over the top of the mountain, then I pushed the pedal to the floor and there was absolutely nothing there. No brakes? No brakes. And uh, I got down the bottom, I thought, Phew, that was a problem. Yeah, that's fear. At over 250 kilometres an hour, one mistake could be your last. Oh, one upside down, it just went straight. It's like walking a tightrope. Bad enough on the drivers. How about their wives? Do you get nervous? Do you ever fear an accident that you might end up living with an invalid? Never. Never even thought never enters my mind. I honestly believe that if you were going to worry about things like that, you'd never get out of bed of a morning. Beverly, why do you think that it will never ever happen to your husband? Do you know that he's simply that good? I know he's that good. I know he's so intuitive. I know he anticipates. He reacts so much quicker than any other person I've ever seen that he can just avoid those situations. It's now, a confidence most women in the racing game would envy. 
and not just a brave front. In 20 years, this is the only serious accident Peter Brock has had. Oh, the place he's hit, Brock! And, and he's totally walked away from it. Perched right up on top there of the Jaguar, car number Then, 15. how does it feel going for a ride with the fastest set of wheels on the track? How fast could it go? The straight was long enough to do 300k, but here it's seeing about 255k, I reckon. But this will be a warm-up, eh? No, no lap record. Sure, sure. You know, I'll just play real cool. That, that's a promise? It's a promise. Intuitive driver, I, I just do it. This is the line through the corner, this is the way the brakes on, this is how I shave my times down, and sure, doesn't everyone do it that way? This corner has been. Well, right now, we're doing about 150 miles an hour. Whoops. And if we came off here, we're just about finished up down in Geelong, I can tell you. And I'll tell you what, the guy in front just blew the motor, and it was very slippery, and we knew we did, but we're cool. I don't think there's any argument that you're married to a good racing driver. Mm. Are you married to a good husband? Tremendous. <laughs> he is a fantastic father, an excellent husband. He'd be one of the softest, kindest, most sincere people you'd come across. Sure, he, he uh, likes a bit of um, the worship that he gets from other people. Hero he worship? That. Yeah, very much hero worship. This is what you'd call Brockmania. At any racetrack, find the biggest crowd and you'll find Peter Brock. Always ready to oblige the fans. For some, the attraction is his racing skills. For others, it's more physical. Oh, I think he's quite a spunky looking guy, actually. I really like him. I've followed him for years in motor racing. I think he's the most horniest guy around. I think he's um, done great things for motorsport in Australia. And um, we need more guys like him. Peter, it's a fact of the game that you're in that racing drivers are seen as sex symbols. Yeah. Have you ever seen yourself that way as a sex symbol? No, I haven't. But I'm happy to say Bev has occasionally. <laughs> well, he's um, the image of what a tremendous number of female would like to have. And uh, there's a hell of a lot of them around there who make sure they let him know that that's exactly how they feel. You must be aware that women find you very attractive. No, it's a... It's a a source of great surprise to me and uh, and uh, something which I uh, don't mind hearing when occasionally it's popped out and I think, gee, that's nice to hear. I'd rather enjoyed hearing that. You come to Bathurst when it's over, whether they've won, whether they've lost, everybody likes to let their hair down and relax, have a few beers and enjoy themselves. Now, that is the time where the girls at motor racing really go for him. It's tremendous. We all want Peter. And because they see me as the big bad ogre, and the girls will get up to stunts to try and get me out of the way. If there's now, competition like out on the racetrack, Beverly Brock will tell you there's plenty of it after the chequered flag. Now, I don't keep tabs on him. I mean, he's his own individual. He's entitled to do what he likes, and it certainly doesn't worry me. In fact, if anything, you become somewhat cynical and you think, oh, that poor demented bird. Beverly, are you saying they're scheming to get him to bed? To get him to bed, to get him around a corner on his own. They, don't, they have no particular qualms about where they get him, as yeah. long as they get him. I mean, there was one girl at Bathurst one year who followed him everywhere. She wasn't leaving his side until she had him, and she said, that's it. And then he went to the men's loo, and she followed him to the men's loo and stood at the doorway, and, and there's only one doorway. And you think, and I mean, he's there for the sole purpose of hoping that somebody's going to get rid of her. I mean, it becomes quite a joke. You can laugh about it. To a generation of fans, Peter Brock typifies the glamour of racing. Men who drive their cars hard and fast. He's been winning in this country for 20 years, and now he's taking a little of that Brock magic to the rest of the world.
he's come to Hockenheim in Germany to have a crack at the biggest names on the European circuit. A long way to go for a race, but as Brock sees it, it's another challenge. I think basically responding to a challenge or a, a dream that I've held for, say, the last decade, where I've felt that we're capable of coming over here and demonstrating that um, Australians and their machinery uh, are capable of being competitive throughout the world. Is it waving the flag? Oh yeah, absolutely. Ab ten tenths waving the flag, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And to help him make the dream come true, Peter Brock chooses as his partner an old enemy, Alan Moffat. It's the most unlikely team. Two men who never really liked each other, on or off the track. As Peter mentioned, we, we, we never saw eye to eye. We weren't looking at each other. That's right. I mean, <laughs> Al and I were really uh, totally, completely committed to uh, winning races. And if that meant beating Alan Moffat or Alan Moffat beating Peter Brock was there the opposition, that's what we did with the, because we're both competitive, single-minded people. But having put us together in the same team, uh, oh, he's not a bad bloke. He's all right. Thank you very much. They've got their egos in neutral, and the boys from down under reckon they could be a winning team. From Mobile Holden Dealer Team in Australia, genannt Peter Brock and Alan Muffet, die ja in diesem Jahr einige Rennen der Tour und Europameisterschaft mitfahren wollen, die zu den schnellsten überhaupt in Australia. Are you at all daunted uh, going out onto that track, knowing that you're against some, some of Europe's best? Not really, no. no I, um, doesn't phase you at all. Doesn't phase me at all. I think that all you can do is to say, let's get out there and give it our best shot. Are you as good as them? I think so, yeah. I mean, we've, I've had no problem sort of dicing amongst them and uh, slipping by the odd guy when he's made a bit of a mistake. Sometimes getting the maximum performance out of the man can be a lot easier than getting it out of the machine. Halfway through the race, Brock strikes engine trouble. Let's get the oil. Let's get the oil surge. I need a quart at least. This time, the champion duo from Australia don't win. At Hockenheim, they must be content with fifth place. But you can be sure they'll be back to try another day. When do you think you'll stop? Stop racing? I think when I reach that stage of saying this is a chore and I've got to think about it. What if your wife asked you, Peter, I want you to stop racing cars, would you do that? No. Would you like him to give up racing? No. When he's ready to, yeah, sure. As You'd long never... as he's happy, I've got no desire for him to give it up at all. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.